What's happening? What's up, guys? All right, we are gonna do uh, an Bo more time uncorking of this legendary 1965 Bowmore uh, bottled in the 1980s. Yes, full strength Sofiantino, Italian yeah. import. We're uh, we've talked about these legendary Bowmores many times on our channel. Um, I know we've reviewed. This is one of the best Bowmores. One of the best whiskeys ever. One of the best whiskeys ever, and it's the Bowmore 64. We reviewed this on the channel, and we also reviewed on our channel this 1956. If you haven't seen the review of that, we rated this a uh, 97. Seven. Yeah. So one of easily one of the best five six whiskeys I've ever had in my life. Yes. The, um, the Sofiantino Italian imports. So we've that. This is a 1965 full strength. I know this is the 1965 43%. Look at the we've difference had, in color. Yeah, we've had this one um, a few times, adored it. Yes. So we got this full strength bottle. We're gonna do just an uncorking here. Yes. And we're gonna follow that up with a little bit of chill time, cigar chat and all that yes. stuff. And, so. and just quickly, there's also a cask strength version of this, believe it or not. I forget the exact ABV, I believe it's 57.8, 58.7 something, but that is so hard to find, it's impossible. This just feels ancient already, if you look at yeah, this. this is nuts, the foil. Look at that foil right there. 1980s vintage foil, baby. I mean, that is, that, that's like a thick, like, $1,000 Napa cab, like, wine bottle foil. And Mike, this was purchased from uh, Italy. Yeah, from our good man Max at the Whiskey Antique shop in Italy and uh, which we've we've been lucky enough to purchase quite a few bottles from so you're, you're gonna witness some adventure right here yeah so usually I would say at least nine out of ten times if not ten out of ten times the cork actually looks pretty intact the top looks pretty intact. The, not the top yes but not mm -hmm. right there it looks like it's crumbling so I have okay. a feeling as we pull out a little bit of that's so either going to get stuck here yeah. or fall down. Basically what you do is you get it just enough as you can to get your little fingernail tips in there enough and then you slowly with the cork top try to slide out as best you can. This but... literally feels ancient. Yeah, it does. But you know, it's always, it's definitely an art, not a science. Trying to open so these old bottles. we've owned this bottle now for a couple years. Um, currently, this at auction goes for about six thousand dollars. Yeah, in uh, the last we saw it, there was an auction uh, this February. This is scary, right here, you yeah. guys. Whiskey auctioneer, February two thousand twenty. Very slowly oh, was wow. four thousand pounds. Yeah, so you go real super tiny slow. Try to get your fingertips. Dude, that was intact as shit. <laughs> you have no idea how this smooth is, that was. This is this is a rarity. Holy fuck. Because these corks suck too. These old school corks suck. So they're Woo! It was amazing. They're, they did, they, didn't, they didn't make the best the best of corks. Kind Especially of cheap. Spring Bank are the worst ever. But yeah, yeah any of them. Back, back in these that days. That was lucky. The, the Bowmore 1956 was an absolute disaster. You touched it, that thing crumbled I on mean, the you liquid. Look, you look at the, you look at the glue, the that was rust. Incredible, bro. You, I don't know if you guys could see that from the cork just kind of being stuck on there, but it didn't come off. It didn't, you know, it's intact. Now, Obviously, it, this is an interesting lesson. Cheers to Max because whiskey antique. Because normally, he's the expert at finding these Italian private collectors. And whether it's them or whether it's him that has a proper storage, it's all about storage. With an auction house, you just never know. But it's all about how it's stored. Well, auction house is stored perfectly, is. but how long is it at the auction house if they're actually storing it? Now we No, but had the guy that's selling it had it had a oh, year or she oh, how did, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Anyway. Yeah. It's so, always a crapshoot. Not recommended to put this back on because it's not going to be a tight seal. Hell no. Um, that was a Mike, miracle. Do we have uh, another cork around? You want to find one? Reach over. We're okay for right now. We'll get one. That was a miracle, though. Yeah, we'll get one. Um, but yes, gorgeous. That was easy. That was easy. We dude. were going to show you guys how to pull the cork out, but uh, not necessary. Yeah, you know, your second option is basically wine bottle opener. Third so my, option is some knives. Full strength, 50%, because it says full strength right here, right? Yeah. It's very interesting. 
well, yeah, I don't know. Could mean could mean uh, you know distillate entry level. Yeah. At least that, that's what it means in America, but I don't know for sure. This is Bullmore, old school Bullmore. Smells delicious, Bullmore. Um, obviously, this thing has not left. This has been in here since the 1980s. It doesn't say exactly when it was bottled. It says 1980s. It says 80s. It's hard to find. Yeah. This um, this is exactly as I as I, I kind of thought it would be. So the Bowmore 1965 43% miniature. My favorite thing is this unique pink grapefruit note that I actually like better than in the Bowmore 56, although 56 has every other possible fruit note that murders that. But the most unique sweet pink grapefruit. So it's very fruit forward, but this is I expected with the, the color. This is more like of that old school Bowmore peat candy funk like distillate forward with all that fruit too. Definitely funky. Definitely Bowmore-y, definitely super, super fruity. This is gonna be an amazing adventure. We just kinda wanted to do the uncorking. Yeah. Um, we'll, oh, talk wow. a, we'll talk a little bit more about Bowmore um, as we shift over and uh, light yeah. up a cigar. Because we're just last thing, here, just just put all three balls together. Yeah. Just look at the color, right? Mm -hmm. They're all all sherry casks, but it's like first fill, right? First fill, second fill, third fill. Just compare this to say this, or the miniature might be even a little lighter, and that's what it is. You're getting, you could just tell it's more sherry forward, but still that beautiful Bomore fruit forward. And I love how no matter what the vintage was, they mix it up just whatever way they want it. The last thing I'm gonna say, but just this is gonna be a monster. Just not sure anything is, this is gonna better be than old school Bowmore. Oh I mean, we always say Springbank's our favorite distillery of all time, but I'm not sure anything's better than old school no. Bowmore. No. As a whole. Just unbelievable. All right, you guys. Kind of did a kind of did a little uh, Got lucky. Yeah, we'll obviously review this. Um, who knows when, maybe in like a year or so after we spend some quality time with it. Um, and kind of go from there, but um, we'll uh, we'll enjoy this a little bit and yep. light up a cigar and, a and maybe have half the dram with the cigar as well. Do Why it. not? Cheers. Cheers. All right. What's up, dogs? We've been mm. we've been nosing this beautiful Bowmore for. Let it breathe. Yeah. Let it breathe. It's gorgeous. 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 Mm. Well, uh, what are we smoking, Mikey? We're doing a uh, Hoyo de Monterrey Epicure Deluxe. De Monterrey. Epicure Deluxe. Gorgeous. Yeah, it smells like pure cocoa and espresso. Oh, this Beaumore, man. That beautiful 1960s Beaumore peat candy is just going nuts. Just going nuts. And you had to breathe, obviously, neck pour. That 50% strength. Oh, my God. The lemon jam, the mangoes, pink grapefruits. It is going nuts, man. Obviously, we would never have a bow more like this with <laughs> a cigar, but it was the uncorking for this video. We enjoyed it a little bit, spent some time with it, and uh, we're going to finish the dram with the cigar anyways, yes, just for fun. Won't do anything like that ever again, obviously. Not going to have something rare and delicate and amazing as this. We do, uh, it. We do it for you guys. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, out of any distillery yes. out there, yes. the distillery to me that's changed the most, and, and we all we all talk about like, oh my God, McAllen is so different now. We all talk about this distillery, that distillery is so different. Ardbeg's quite a bit mm. different now than it used to be. Very, very different. Lafroig is very different. Mm. But I would say the one distillery that's the most different, especially with their oh. distillery OB bottlings. Especially with their most oh. distillery OB bottlings, um, I would yeah. say Bowmore has changed more than any other distillery. These older 50s and 60s Bowmores are just the most just the most insanely fruitiest things you can ever imagine. 
with just this like beautiful coastal PD, just beautifulness in the background and we call it like that that peat candy funk right? yeah well yeah well whether you're doing rich sherry or you're doing light sherry yeah. or you're doing bourbon i mean no matter what it was it was just no matter incredibly what. magic and I, I don't understand how their sherry casks were so fresh fruit driven right we're so used to sherry casks being the the raisins figs and stuff like that toffee dates yeah 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 it's yeah. just 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 mind-blowing casks mind-blowing way of doing things um no it is man and, and, and so different and i know in the 80 80s distillate bowmore they're definitely uh it got a lot better yeah 80s distillate bowmore there's definitely that that some of that fruitiness kind of came back not on the same level but it's mainly with independent bottlers yeah. So you, you could get some 80s. That's how you get a good one. Yeah, you could, you, if you find like a 1980s kind of uh, independent bottler Bowmore, you're not going to get anything like the 50s and 60s OB old school Bowmores, but but no. you're still going to get a, a very good Bowmore. Where from the distillery, I've had some that were good, like uh, hand-filled casks at the distillery. Right. Um, that you could buy at auction, and um, there's there's a few that I've had that were good. Like some of the Fagiels. Yeah, yes. yeah, but but overall, what's coming out from them? Let's say you just go buy their Bowmore 25 year old right now. Yeah, it's just not doing it. Yes, they're releasing the 1964 50 year old Bowmore Black. I'm sure that's amazing. The, but yeah, again, the that's, Aston Martin one. That's 180 thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, no, so, so there's that, but obviously That's that doesn't count. Thing. That yeah. doesn't count. Yeah, so. Uh, no, but yeah, th this was just, this Bowmore 1965 was just like that vintage. Just like, oh yeah, the vintage, let's come out with it, 1980s. Just like a regular release. It's crazy. Mike, we've now tried three different 1965 Bowmores. Yes. Or own, I should say, three different 65 Bowmores. Yes. Yeah. No, yeah, you, you kind of think, yeah, Ardbeg, Ardbeg's kind of similar in that class, but I think you're right. I think Bowmore has the biggest gap, like the Grand Canyon gap, mm -hmm. between what it used to be, what it could be, and what it is today. I think you're right, man. Yeah, you say what it could be. I don't know if it can be that anymore. I don't know. Does that barley exist? I mean, what, what, how, how, what were they doing to the yeast back then? How how slow was the process where they were like, nope, this yeast is not this yeast strain's not good enough. This yeast not good enough. That's not good enough. Were they really being that picky? Or was I don't know. Was it luck? I don't know. Did all the all the little angles combine because yeast can be fruity, yeast can be off putting and nasty. Obviously barley can just be kind of bitter, barley can kind of be sweet. Right. Um uh I, I know like, you know, back in the day it, everything wasn't so mass produced so they would you know the stills would get a little bit of a break everything would get a little bit of a break you didn't need 300,000 casks because there wasn't that much demand so like you can actually pay attention to the casks not to mention you know they were able to get some of the better casks back then those really really good casks kind of started vanishing away yeah. and now you kind of have to use whatever you can get and if you even have a really good cask right now you best believe that that's going towards a very special bottling, right? Yeah. Where these were just regular releases back then. When I was gonna ask, like, if if they attempted to do it right, they'd have to do it not mass produced. They'd have to do it artisan style, where obviously, inefficiently, they'd be losing money to competitors. So, but even if they did, yeah, no, none of the transport casks anymore have to do a mass produce these days the demand for whiskey globally is just a whole other level it's probably impossible yeah how's creamy is that cigar creamy not espresso cafe latte yeah cappuccino yeah gorgeous um this was my christmas present to mike this year the anak 1975 i haven't tried it yet you've had it yes sir thank you merry christmas <laughs> And the cork eviscerated, oh, by it, the way. It did? 2015 cork. Speaking of corks. This was bottled 2015? I, I think so, right? 2014, yeah, 2014. close enough. So this is a 39-year-old yeah. Anak. 
Speaking of quirks, and I moistened that shit, and it eviscerated. Cask me. strength at 44.2%. Yeah. That's boring. You know who loves this whiskey, who reviewed this whiskey first on YouTube, was uh, Ro uh, Rob from Whiskey in the Six. He was really into the Anox. What's up, Rob? Uh, he reviewed this. And, and, and I haven't tried a ton of Anox, but from what I hear, this is one of the better ones. At least recently, fairly recently released one of the better ones. So I forget, almost 40, right? 39 yeah, years old. 39 yeah. years old. Gorgeous. Oh, I this see. is it's amazing. This is my first time trying it. Mike, Mike for Christmas got scenario. us got us some insane samples from the old Alliance, which obviously just those samples alone would be the price of a crazy expensive bottle. Uh, and he also got us both the most. I've got to show you guys next time. The most mm -hmm. epic cigar cutter mm -hmm. um, I've ever seen. It's just unbelievable. It's like a like a razor that just slices it off. By the way, how's the cut? Is it all right? Perfect. It works. It works. Yeah, it works. Okay. It works. All good. yeah. So, anyways, um, we did a few reviews. We did uh, an unbottling. We did a few reviews. We had lunch. Well, I had lunch. Mike doesn't eat until about 10 p.m. every day. He actually. Um, I think I've brought it up before. He fasts black coffee and water only until about 10 p.m. every day. Hmm? 9, 10 p.m. Am I right? About 9, 9, 10 p.m. 9, 10 p.m. He's actually able to, I don't know how he holds his liquor so well. Um, I'll, I have like three drams and I need food. But like, he's able to smoke cigar on an empty stomach, drink on an empty stomach, and not be sloppy at all. Just be like completely fully there, not even have to be affected, so. Irish. 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 <laughs> yeah, man. I'm telling you, there's, there's something to that. There's something to that. But Armenians are supposed to be able to do that too, but true I don't that. know. I don't know. True. True that. <laughs> oh, this is nice. Oh, yeah, dude. This is nice. I'm digging this. It's soft, but it's very fruity, and it's very full. Yep. It's not not just like pure sherry. You're no. Getting, you're getting some of that distillate character. Yeah. That's awesome, man. That's fruity. Yep. That goes very well with that's a cigar. With a cigar, you don't necessarily, I mean, we'll do it. We don't care. We're not like hardcore cigar people or, you know, we're just trying to enjoy ourselves. Uh, but with a cigar... I personally don't love necessarily a cask strength 60% beast, even though I will bring out cask strength bourbons out here and have them with it. I enjoy it, but it leaves a pepperiness on my tongue, and with the smoke, it can kind of have an effect sometimes. I but can see again, that. Yeah, I can see that. Again, yeah. that's like if I'm like analyzing the cigar experience. Yeah, like super right? hardcore. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, but overall, something like this works just perfect. Perfect. It's cast strength, but it's not 60%. It's like 44%. Mm. Well, it's aged. That age, that complexity blends in with the cigar complexity and combines, becomes a whole different world. We're, uh, That's my favorite. Later tonight, we're supposed to do like a Whiskey of the Year. Whiskey of the Year video where we do our top five. And we honestly can't figure out what are We know three of them. We can't figure out what other two we want to put in there. Mm-hmm. Is really really tricky because we we don't want it to be uh we obviously our one rule is it needed to be released in 2020 of course um last year we made the rule of value and uh it needed to be like a regular release kind of a thing we kind of go into that yeah but i think this year we're gonna we were kind of forced to switch it up a little bit because we just wouldn't have a list if we kind of yeah, went about like we it talked way. about in a couple of cigar chat it's, it was kind of a weak year we felt for scotch mainly so to have our real top five value list yeah we're forced to include some quote special releases or limited edition releases to be fair but that are still attainable to be fair we got so much of 2020 releases towards the end of the year like even in january of 2021 because of the pandemic true things weren't really coming in and, that was and tariffs sure so 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 a lot of stuff got really really delayed yeah and then the second part is we didn't buy as many of uh the, the regular released scotches as we normally do either because 
we just started getting more and more disappointed in each purchase. So we, out of any year, I know I for sure out of every year, this was the least amount of regular released scotches that um, that I purchased. And I know we purchased a lot. It was a good year for bourbon overall. Yes. Uh, it was an interesting year for bourbon. Um, but I do know that we've talked about, I think we talked about this in our last video, that mm -hmm. we're definitely going to slow down. I think Mike's made a promise that you're not going to buy any bourbon this year. Correct. You're going to stick to that? Correct. You're going to try? Correct. Yeah. So far, so good. So far, so good. What is one, one month in? One month in. 11 to go. Yeah, no bourbon, no rye. So which bottle? Well, I think the hardest one to not grab was the Discovery uh, four. 4, right? Yes. Bardstown Discovery 4. Yeah, and Whiskey Tube, and probably for a good reason, everyone's going nuts on that. So actually, between Discovery 2 and 3, I prefer 2. But everyone loved 3, and they're going nuts on 4. So we, you know, we talk about it. It's like that first little step. Even though, what, it's $130, you know, plus shipping. But that first little step, not adding to cart. You get the email, Discovery 4, we just got it in. Yeah. Not adding to cart, that first step makes it a little easier. Ten. I've probably passed on three, four bottles since then. I would have for sure gotten last year. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's, and I know we it's were, something. And I know we were buying every release of the old we Carters. Bought. And yeah. out of every release, we only loved two of them, right? Two, yeah. So they were most of them were good. Some were better than others. Right. But, but not worth like two, three, two to three hundred dollars yeah, that we were really having to pay in, for it. In SoCal, LA, et cetera, where I live, it's really almost about three hundred dollars you're looking at. Most of the time. I've been lucky to get get them at retail though. True. Yeah. True. Yeah. Realistically. But whatever. Two two fifty, three hundred, yeah. Yeah. Not There's worth little, it. Little cork bits in there, huh? Yeah, I tried. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, really old Carter bourbon batch three and five are the shit magical but besides that quality good but not worth two to three hundred dollars and you guys know us and we've talked about i believe we've talked about this many times before this is excellent it's a perfect cigar drink right yeah um especially with some cork yeah <laughs> yeah we might as well keep pouring and get the corks out. I know. <laughs> we, uh, we are firm believers in once you have a large collection of whiskey, whatever large collection is to you, but once you have a large collection of whiskey, we definitely are firm believers of buying bottles that you're truly going to love, right? Because if yeah. I have... 200 open bottles, forget how many closed bottles I have. If I have two, 300 open bottles of whiskeys that I enjoy, to me spending $200 on a whiskey that's just okay, to me is, is it really messes with my mind, right? Mm -hmm. It really, really messes with my mind um, because $200 is a shitload of money, right? And you guys are saying, what are you talking about? You just opened up a $6,000 bone marrow. But yeah, yeah, but perspective, like $200 is still a lot of money. This is a, yeah. like a museum whiskey. And if I'm not going to be reaching and craving that $200, I could spend that on something something else, right? you know? So, um, so definitely... I think Mike, I, I can't do what Mike does, but he think he's planning on not buying very many bottles at all. He wants to do like just a few epic, epic bottles. Um, and it makes sense because you bought a lot, a lot, a lot of bottles last I went, year. I went way too nuts last yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, volume. But yeah, it's just in the way that, the way that everything is going up in price, you know, just global demand overall. I'm just looking in the future and there's certain bottles on my bucket list that if I can get at a certain price I've had in mind, knowing that it's gonna be whatever, multiple of that, the next year, a year after, I wanna do it now. Especially having this kind of shock reaction to where I went all like volume, just every like 150, 200, $300 bottle I wanted, I'm over that, at least for this year. You kinda of go back and forth, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um Mike, to uh, topic-wise, I kind of wanted to talk about um, whiskey collecting. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, yes. I wanna... yes. whiskey, whiskey collecting, like different kind of collectors. So we're collectors, 
but we're the kind of collectors that are buying to open. So it's like if we're buying a bottle, if we don't open it, it's because we're buying it to open it later. If we're obviously if we're opening it, we're opening it right away, right? So we're either opening it now or buying to open it later. So for us, when we say we're investing in a bottle, so what Mike says when he's investing, for example, let's say two years ago, when was this purchase? Two years ago or one year ago? I was going to say, yeah, now, about, about, about two years ago. A little two bit years, two years ago, ago yeah. yeah. So two years ago, this was priced half of what it is right now okay so just within two years imagine it's six thousand and it was three thousand two years ago so that's investing but when people hear investing in whiskey what they're thinking is they're buying it and then it doubles in price so instead of leaving three thousand dollars in the bank you buy it and that three thousand turns into six thousand you flip it and you make three grand right within two years hundred percent on your investment that's a very very good investment but the way we're viewing investment is you're not paying six thousand dollars today to drink it you're paying three thousand dollars two years earlier and then two years later you're getting to drink it so it's still investing it's still collecting uh but it's for the purpose of drinking if you collect this way it's almost impossible to it's almost impossible to get disappointed because if you're buying for investment purposes and your bottle doesn't go up in value and it's just sitting there, you don't want it. It's just a bottle of whiskey, essentially, right? It's just glass with some liquid in it. And if it's not going up in price and you're investing that way, you're setting yourself up for disappointment. Yeah, I mean, and the key is, right, like when two years ago when you buy it, it's not going to go down in value. It's not like a stock. So as long as you're drinking it, you do research you know it's gonna be a gem. You can't be disappointed. But then like, and we have certain bottles where like we know five, 10 years from now, when we open it, it's gonna be God knows how much more to buy to yeah. drink it then. But yeah. as long as we're drinking it and we know it's gonna be awesome, that's all we care about at least. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's passionate, because you know, obviously like you, you have and you have, and now it's like, it's a whole industry, right? Like there's hedge funds. And who knows how many of these Unicorns we see at auctions are getting bought by hedge funds, you know, or collectives just to invest and then share amongst their investors. So, so absolutely, but there's different ways of looking at it. But to me, true. whiskey's meant to be enjoyed, and not by making money off of by consuming, so by experiencing. So far, it's worked right for the investors, for the people that were buying to flip most bottles that they bought, I would say over 90% of bottles that they purchased did end up going in price, especially these rare auction bottles. True. But at some point, True. at some point, I guarantee you it's going to turn. It just can't keep going up and up and up and up and up and up, right? At some point, it's not going to be fashionable anymore to collect whiskey, just like in the past. In the past, it went from, it went from cognac to to whiskey, to, to vodka. vodka, it was more fashionable. <laughs> yeah. You were you were cooler the martini if you age. drank martini a age. martini than if you drank a Macallan 30. Big time. You were cooler martini if you age. drank a freaking vodka martini than if you were drinking <laughs> Macallan 30 year old. Okay, just think about that. Cyclical, now, man, life is cyclical. Now, if you're drinking, if you're drinking vodka now, you're pretty much considered a person who has zero taste. Right? Yeah. Because so, vodka has zero taste. Because vodka has zero taste. Yeah. But but you were sophisticated. Right. But yeah. You were sophisticated. You were the guy in the suit. You were yeah. James Bond. Yeah. 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 Well, like, compare, like, say, like, Mad Men, right? What was that? 60s to, yeah, like, 80s, 90s, where, yeah, it was all vodka, martinis, you know, even to late 90s, like, New York, you know? Yeah. Big time. So don't. It'll blow my mind. I hope. I honestly hope. Like, part of me, it's so fun to be the. It's so fun to be part of whiskey while it's blowing up like this. Right. Because it makes it. It does make it more fun, right? You see the bottles go up. There's something something very special about owning these things and drinking them, knowing that they're worth a lot. But can you imagine if it wasn't collectible? It wouldn't change the way we feel about it. 
we would still be buying it and we would be buying it for a lot 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 cheaper that's but, the beauty of how we do it yeah yeah but i think at some point it'll flip i know for a fact that some people are going to get burned from it I definitely know that some people will get burned from it. Some people have, will, will, will invest mm -hmm. in a $150,000 McAllen no. or, a, or a very, very expensive whiskey for the sake of flipping, holding, and all of a sudden that bottle might only be worth $30,000. Well, that's how it's going to be. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be like a few like single ticket items that are super high priced, mm -hmm. super limited, mm -hmm. that won't work that same formula mm -hmm. of investing. Mm -hmm. They've been doing it for a while, and then boom, they'll change their formula. Yep. 100%. Mike, how do you pronounce this? This is some of the best chocolate I've ever had. Hugh? H? No, that's H with a hand. It's a hand. I would just say it still is a Hugh. This is the chocolate. 70% dark. Where do you find this shit, man? Every yeah. time I see this guy for cigars, he puts out some different crazy ass chocolate. <laughs> and I ask him where it's from and he won't tell me. <laughs> He fucking. said, don't worry about it, doggy. <laughs> hey, what's that, what's that chocolate brand called where it's like $500 per chocolate brand? Oh my God, dream. Toak. 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 It's like $500 for a, a piece this big. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck is that? How much better than this can it be? Mm. Oh my God. Oh my God. Mmm. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... Mm. Mm. Collecting mm. whiskey. Mm. Mm. Fuck is that? That's vegan and paleo. <laughs> Kill two birds in one stone. Oh, there's wow. no dairy. Organic, man. No dairy in chocolate. That's it's nuts. How do you not have milk and chocolate? What the fuck is that, dude? It's That's like, scary. It's like, this is actually like fake chocolate. Though. It's like alien shit, man. It shows you how shitty our chocolate palate is. 70% cacao. Wow. No palm oil, no refined sugar. There's no, no sugar, no refined no, sugar. No cane sugar, no sugar alcohols, no dairy, wow. no gluten. It's like alien sugar, dude. What's the sugar content in this? Dude, where the fuck are you getting the sugar in this? Nine grams? It's dark, can't see. Wow. Total That's sugar, insane. nine. For half the bar. That's amazing, dude. That's why we like it. No. This is really, this is unbelievable. Some of the best chocolate I've ever had. Ever. This is better than the last one you brought, man. House ground cacao. Wow. Ah. Ah. Mm. Coconut sugar. Coconut sugar. That's the key. Unrefined organic coconut sugar. That is bomb. And all organic. That is some bomb shit, man. Hakshu 18? Hakshu 18. Mike. When was this bottle open? It hasn't been drank. I've been, I've been a good boy. That thing's blown up in price, man. 800? Yeah. I know the Yama, Yama 18 is 800. This one might be a little less, but. You know, I think we I think after we reviewed it. We got this for 350. That's the only one I have. 350. 300. 300. Yeah. Yeah, I just had like that and maybe one dram after. It's so fun when you dig, dig through your open bottles that you forgot about. That like I always forget about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. No, this is a good one. I've never tried the twenty five. You tried the twenty five, right? Yes. Yeah, I bought. I bought. Um, I think I bought maybe an auction. Yeah, a nice. minute miniature of the twenty five. We're discussing okay. earlier that we want to do some re reviews because yes. well, our channel is still small, but we reviewed some incredible gems when we literally only had like a hundred subscribers. Yes. And uh, those videos just haven't been watched. You know, we got like a Spring Break 30, Oishi 20. You know, we have we have some like really special bottles that just like no one's viewed, you know? Right. Um, and uh, they're worth re-reviewing. We haven't had some of those drams in, in a couple of years. So it's yes, fun sir. for us to try again. And um, so we're, we're considering starting to do some re-reviews. We might even do one later tonight. Yes, sir. Um, so, so, so we'll check. Mm. We'll see how that goes. But Japanese whiskey, man. Jesus. Yeah, this Jap for sure is a Japanese whiskey and not a scotch. Labeled as Japanese. This is just like the essence of the Japanese rainforest. We with get the beautiful fruits dripping off the leaves. Mm. I, 
I, I, I should say I on this one because within where I live, my family and, and, and friends, not whiskey friends, the, um, but not saying that, you know, uh, not like just like whiskey friends, but like just like family and friends that just drink Black Label, Macallan 12, mm. Lafroy, uh, you know, uh, Glenfiddich 12, Glenfiddich 15, stuff like that, right? Glen Levitt like, 12? Yeah, 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 stuff like that. Yeah. And, and But they they all have they all know about the buzz of Japanese whiskeys. Everyone, yeah. And they're always, I always get a call, FaceTime. Yeah. I'm telling you, every weekend I get a FaceTime call from someone, even my wife's sister. Mm. Just like, I'm buying a gift wow. for someone, or I'm buying it for myself, or I'm yeah. going to a party. And every time they are so intrigued by like this like random $100, $150 Japanese whiskey because they're like, oh, it's I can't do Yamazaki, I can't do Hakushu because it's so expensive. What right. about this one? I'm like, are you kidding me? $150? Like, I'm like, you can get and down the street from where I live, you can get uh, Glendronic 18 for $135. You want to spend $150 on a fake Japanese whiskey that's probably say, like two year old junk, three year old junk? Well, if it's $150 or less, it's not a Japanese whiskey, it's well. scotch. <laughs> exactly. No, I, that's it. That's, yeah, everywhere I go, everywhere I go, the shops I go to for bourbon and stuff, it's like minimum 200 for Yamazaki 12 now. It's just. It's got insane. I man. can get Yamazaki. It's it sells out, but I get the opportunity to buy it for one twenty. You want me to grab you one? Are you interested in it? No, no. It's I just it's crazy now, man. I have one, closed, just a half. It's funny. I've never tried it though. Of course you have. Never. Not funny. I've never tried it because I never tried it in the beginning. You've had Yamazaki twenty five. You never had Yamazaki twelve. Correct. I never tried uh, it early on. Had it. You just don't no, remember. Never. Never tried it early on. And then when I was kind of interested, because I had, Dude, the, I used to I had make the older cocktails stuff, with it on a daily basis. Maybe I had it in a cocktail, but I never tried it by itself. Like never like focused and no, you know. Has nothing to focus it. on. It's no, but never whatever. drammed it. But by that time, I was kind of curious. It had already blown up to one fifty plus, and for you know Yamazaki bourbon barrel aged twelve year old, I'm not gonna pay one fifty. Yeah, try. Plus, I'll get so. you a bottle then, because because I'm able to get them at retail at one twenty sometimes, but they mm. sell out within five minutes. But I'm Ooh. still able to get it. I, I turned it down. Everyone's all over it. But I'm, I'm not interested in that for hundred. To, to me, it's a forty, fifty dollar whiskey. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Just like the eighteen to me is a two hundred dollar whiskey. The twelve to me is a forty, fifty dollar yeah. whiskey. Um, the twenty five tastes like tastes like a thousand dollar whiskey. Well, really, it's funny. Speaking of uh, Hawkshoe, what it was was one of the best deals ever. Was Costco went to Costco like years ago. They had Hawkshoe 12 for $40. And so, who knows if it's true or not, but I kind of assume Yamazaki... Hawkshoe 12 is better than Yamazaki 12. Yeah, so who knows, but the point is, if Hawkshoe 12 is 40, I'm not going to pay that much more for Yamazaki 12. Yeah. And I went and tried to find it, 150 so forget about that. Hawkshoe 12 is good, especially for cocktails. Mm. There is a... Uh... It's interesting what you say. I was thinking about this when we're, I think about this with us too. There's bottles, cause you know, we're willing to way, 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 way overspend to get the best of the best, right? Sure. But bottles that we were used to, for example, Yamazaki 18, we were used to buying that for $140 because we were seeing that at the store like we never saw this at the store no nope. right we weren't drinking whiskey when this was released right we right. were just born we're born yeah so but there's guys like maybe ralphie he always talks about that he won't spend a certain amount of whiskey because ralphie probably was used to buying this for exactly. 50 bucks exactly or saw so, it at a certain price yeah exactly. so he went to the store yep. and he saw this for a hundred bucks or something like Human that psychology. right 50 yeah. yeah so now he's looking at it for thousands of dollars and he's laughing yeah. saying like are you kidding me yeah but we never did that and we're curious about the about the best so it's it, it's kind of relative so like it's now we relative, see man. we see yamazaki 18 for six to eight hundred dollars and we laugh right and not that yamazaki 18 is even close to that quality it's right. not 
but there's the new guy that's entering whiskey that's a good point. who's saying Yamazaki 18, Yamazaki 18, and they're they're comfortable paying, not comfortable, but but they're willing to pay eight hundred dollars because it sells out at that price even. Maybe they're thinking it might be one of the best whiskeys they've ever tried at that point. So for some people, early, maybe early it is. Yeah, journey, yeah, maybe. yeah, yeah. So, but but Any it's very interesting yeah. how it works. I right. guarantee you, no matter how much you want this Bullmore, if you saw it at the store for a hundred bucks, however many years ago, yeah, you it would be impossible to pull the trigger on it at, at, at a massive price. But you never saw that. Right. It was already very expensive by the time you were uh, a whiskey drinker. Yeah, to take it to an extreme, imagine. Black Bowmore one originally was 180 pounds. Which $300 is, retailed here in the United States. Yeah, which at that time was a lot. Imagine if you saw it on your store shelf at that price. Yeah. And now you're seeing it for whatever. Well, <laughs> I've heard what? stories about Bowmore Black when it, it was it was one of the first like super expensive whiskeys that came out at 300 bucks, and people were like, 300 bucks for a whiskey? Are you kidding me? What I mean, but they were also used to that kind of quality, you know, back then too. Yeah, it's all relative. It's all very relative. You get immune. You get immune. I um, I was talking. Who was I talking to? I can't remember who I was talking to, but they were pulling the trigger on something more expensive, and I said, "You do this a few times, that price will become immune to you. It doesn't yep. matter. It doesn't matter if you make." $50,000 a year, $40,000 a year, $30,000 a year, or $300,000 a year. You will get immune to that mm -hmm. price. Just like when we go to a steakhouse, I don't care what, uh, some people go for their birthday, some people have a lot of money and they go once a week, right? Mm -hmm. So that person who doesn't make that much money goes to a nice steakhouse maybe once a year for their birthday. But when they go, they know it's 300, it's no problem. So you, you become immune to that. Yeah, I'm going to a steak, but I said you pay $300 to eat right you get immune to it you get immune to it it just becomes a thing it's the same thing with whiskey you start spending certain amounts on it eventually it just becomes the norm for you yeah sure it's a weird fucked up psychological human weird psychology yeah. Man. Yeah. yeah yeah absolutely japanese rainforest fruit garden man pd yeah, we say this is the Japanese Lafroig. Man, this is so Japanese nice. Lafroig, softer, more delicate, because it's not beastie like Lafroig. Today's Lafroig, <laughs> but, but yes, today's yes. To, oh today's Lafroig is beastie. What are you talking about? No, I mean it's not like today's Lafroig is beastie. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like maybe not sixties Lafroig, maybe like eighties Lafroig, nineties mm -hmm. Lafroig. Mm -hmm. mm. But yeah, definitely. Yeah, Yamazaki is the Macallan. This is the Lafroy. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Mm. It's a much more delicate, softer. Yes. No. Oh, yes. More rounded, rounded peat. Hakusho is uh, Hakusho is good, but again, this can't be more than a two hundred, two hundred fifty dollar bottle. Correct. Yeah, obviously like three hundreds overpaying, but when I paid three hundred, this was this was a quote dusty bottle when I was seeing it for five hundred plus in other shops by me. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I, no, no, I, no. I got this somewhere else. There is um Yes. There there, there there's something to like if I know something is six hundred dollars, to me it's only drinks like a two hundred dollar bottle, but it sells for six hundred everywhere and I find it for three hundred, I'm gonna buy it. I'm gonna buy it. That's again the psychology of knowing the worth, even though I'm not reselling it. But that that side, that mental psychology of it, on how how, right. how all that works. Like you still got it, yeah. You know, and yeah. th this is this is our this is our passion, our hobby, uh -huh. enthusiasm. Mike, we normally do a story. I didn't do a story. I'll do a story about myself this time. Mm. No, Mike's story. I'll go. I'll do good, a point, story. good point. Good <laughs> point. I, I, I'm trying to think on top of my head, but I'll, 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 I'll do I'll do a story of when we were a few years into our journey and we were getting very curious. We were in our 20s. Mm. We were in our 20s. I, I walk into a shop locally where I live, lived at the time. Young guy in my 20s, you got to remember, 
this is over 10 years ago and uh young guys buying expensive whiskey at the time was really not as common as it is now right Different now world, everyone, yeah man. yeah Different now, world yeah. now everyone's buying you know expensive stuff so i kind of walked into the shop and, and, and I, I wouldn't do this now but back then i liked kind of playing dumb a little bit right and just kind of like well i wanted to see the guys the guy's reaction working mm -hmm. at the store sure, so like sure. i'm asking him what's good what's this or that and he's sure. looking at me some as some like you know 24 year old punk yeah. walking in not gonna buy anything he's, he's completely ignoring me and he's just like yeah, yeah, yeah you know glenn fittick black label or what you know like yeah. stuff like that right <laughs> and then Jameson, yeah and then he's just kind of, i could tell he's almost like ignoring me by like talking to the guy next to him and stuff mm -hmm, like that mm -hmm. like why is this little kid here wasting my time he doesn't think i'm gonna even buy the black label right i'm not even gonna spend the 20 bucks on the black label and um so i play dumb and i see what he has i know what i'm gonna buy already i already know what i'm gonna buy but i'm just chit-chatting with him a little bit um and he's not giving me the time of day at all he's not giving me the time of day at all and all of a sudden i go all right, I want two Port Allens, two of the two of the thirty-year-old Port Allens, one of the Lagavulin twenty-one, and a 1979 Highland Park. That was the first time I went to Albert's. Yes. And he's just like, he's just like frozen. He he's cracked like, the fucking code, man. <laughs> exactly. And he's just frozen. He's like, what the hell? You're just talking about black. I was just recommending black label to you. All of a sudden, this guy is asking for Port Allen. So we got two Port Allens. One's yours, one's mine. And uh, a Lagavulin 21 and a 1979 Highland Park. Um, and uh, got those bottles. And uh, we, I grew very close with them after that. Uh, to the point where, you know, very close friends. Like family. I call him uncle now. He was at my wedding and everything. Yeah. So. It, it turned it turned turned into a close yeah, going friendship. In, you were like rain man at the casino man yeah <laughs> <laughs> so it was very interesting i really enjoyed doing that when i was kind of walking in but right. wouldn't That's give funny. me wouldn't give me the time of day um and he was he was just shocked that i was a a young guy interested in those yes. yeah there's uh there's a lot of uh not a lot of but there's like famous people around that area and, and he, t he tells me he's like at that time it was like movie people like movie stars and stuff like that heather locklear was buying port allen as he was saying he's like and then right. all of a sudden you you were in there like buying it so at the time it wasn't uh it wasn't common to uh still very expensive back then by the way you were, you very were saying, very expensive you were saying what one of his last um one of his last Glendronic 1968 steven spielberg sent his guy to buy it yes so it's like yeah like that area is very close to an area and as well as Malibu where a ton of stars, Hollywood stars live. So yeah, mainly they obviously disposable uh, income. Since I'm buy. not naming since I'm not naming who it is, he wouldn't want me sharing this, but he's he's also the guy that provides uh Rush Limbaugh with all his cigars. Correct. I don't know about all his cigars, but a lot of his cigars. Yeah. Do you know if Rush Limbaugh still smokes cigars? Don't know. Yeah. But yeah, exactly. Um but uh the yeah. point is he's got access <laughs> yeah 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 absolutely so he sees this little like college kid come in <laughs> see yeah i wasn't a college I, I wasn't a college kid you want a piece here yes sir exactly crazy yeah, so this is what like fake chocolate apparently coconut chocolate oh. it's not chocolate it's coconut it's unbelievable i'll take it man i don't know what kind of coconut shops you're shopping at but it's good Good piece of chocolate mm. with a good creamy cigar is mm -hmm. you don't want it sweet though mm -mm. not too sweet just a little bit of sugar mm. Mm. fantastic mm. that is masterful man no no this is where this is where the sweets provided by the whiskey yeah oh it's amazing dude uh, it's not going to be like a uh, cigar chat, but I definitely want to make a video one day mm -hmm. where we talk about palate and um, how to have the ideal palate. Like, let's say you have your special. We used to do this. Like, we used to really make sure we wouldn't eat anything. We wouldn't do anything. Yes. 
and really be ideally ready from brushing your teeth to flossing to eating to what you're drinking mm -hmm. to how your diet is um how to ultimately really really cleanse your palate um to really really be able to taste and while you're tasting this whole fun this whole thing with food and whiskey i see it everywhere mm -hmm. I might even we might even get some thumbs down for saying this because it's really everywhere and it's by like some serious whiskey drinkers to like to you know distillery people and like pairing food with like high end whiskey. I don't understand it. I don't understand yeah. it at all. Having having food and then drinking like Habiki Thirty after eating like. <laughs> yeah, after like pairing it with like crackers and cheese and strawberries and cream and like, yeah, yeah. I, I, absolutely not. Mm. There's no way you're enhancing the flavor of the whiskey by pairing it with food. I promise you that. I no. promise you that. You are not. You want a clean palate. There's so much going on with that whiskey. You don't want other things in there changing that. It's not enhancing it. If you're enjoying it, do it but you're not enhancing the flavors of the whiskey. If it's enhancing the flavors of the whiskey, it just means you weren't really appreciating that whiskey to its fullest extent and of what even, it is. And even like, even times when earlier on when I experimented with that, if I had the same whiskey, say, with some tiny little bites of like A5 Wagyu, it might be good together because you're eating A5 Wagyu and you're having some nutty whiskey. When I had the same whiskey by itself, on a clean prime palate, it is night and day. You can't compare. So I'm not saying you can't get enjoyment out of that. No, that's not what I'm saying. Exactly. But it's not exactly. gonna enhance it. It's not gonna make it better. And I'm not saying that's it's not the point. I'm not saying it's not super fun. Yeah. And that I that and, 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 and that I and that I wouldn't do it. Yeah. I'll do it. Right. But it's not gonna but, enhance it or make it more complex yeah. or out of their flavor. This stuff. this whole thing of it's making yeah. the whiskey better, you're bringing more out of the experience. No. It just means you really didn't fucking appreciate the damn whiskey enough to begin with, and you need to you turn need food you, with you it. need to turn into a little bougie ass game, right. and get foo foo about it. Yeah, you know, just like you know, right. to to like it more. Exactly. That's all it is. Yeah, it's not like wine, where wine and good food were made to go together. Um, a lot of people will just a lot of people that are very into whiskey will completely disagree with us, but. But that's it is what it is. That's definitely how I feel about that. Um, that doesn't mean that we're not going to enjoy the two together. That's not what I'm saying at all. We will, but if we're ideally, if we're ideally tasting something, that's not the way we're going to do it. Um, if it's all about the whiskey, um, but but there are ways to re like for example, if we we're doing eight reviews in one day, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say we do the first four half ounces, so total of two ounces on a completely empty palate, right? I brush my teeth before I go to bed. I wake up in the morning, I rinse my mouth with just water, water, right? I floss and brush my teeth before I go to bed. I wake up, I have two, three cups of water, and I have my whiskey. I'm, it's mm -hmm. really going to hit my senses because I'm hungry, yeah. my palate is clean, and I'm just going to hit everything. Then now I've already had two ounces of whiskey, so now I'm going into my fifth whiskey. My It's not going to hit my senses nearly the same way as the first few were. So a way to reset is just like a, a black coffee or just a, a shot of espresso, a very, very rich piece of dark chocolate. It'll kind of take out the flavors of the other whiskeys. Um, so something like a black tea, black coffee, a uh, very p dark piece of chocolate. Mm -hmm. You have that. It just kind of resets it a little bit. You can have a glass of water after that as well. Wait a little bit. Wait an hour. Sure. And it's not going to be as perfect, but it's a great way to kind of reset. Phenomenal. Crackers and cheese and all that will kind of take take away a little bit of that hunger feeling, but having pieces of crackers stuck in the back of your mouth that is not going to be the ideal way no, it's me. to yeah. taste the to whiskey. Me, it messes yeah. it messes with the process too much. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's that's why I like like um, as I do this intermittent fasting, I basically have coffee, black coffee, no sugar, no creamer, no flavor, with a beautiful flavor of quality coffee, but 
sparkling water, and then when I not always when I have that first dram, if I have That's a right. nice dram, sir, nice dram before I have my first meal, it's just your your palate is craving, starving, and all your senses are heightened. And that's at least for me what I find. I get the best enjoyment. I find every single note possible out of whiskey. Quick master distillers. That might be a good question, yeah. How do master distillers do it? Around 11 a.m. they start. Yeah. Empty palate. Yeah, well, they, I have done research, yeah. Like, also, um, like sommeliers, master sommeliers of wine as well, yeah. Like it's some scientific thing, who knows? And like 11 a.m. is like your prime human sensory. Yeah. That would make sense. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, again, we're talking about the ideal way of tasting something. We're not saying that we never do any of those other things. Right. We do. But don't sit here and tell me that that's the way to enhance the flavor. I saw McCallum making those videos, right? I, I, I can't remember, I saw something on YouTube where they're, <laughs> they're pairing it with food to enhance the flavor of the McCallum, and it's just, it's just they don't believe that shit either. Yeah, they're well just that, fucking that's saying That's modern McCallum marketing. Check the battery on this thing. That's modern McCallum marketing. Anything to sell modern McCallum. No, it's still, still going, I don't know about the battery. But... Modern McAllen. They need other stuff on the side. <laughs> so modern McAllen. That's kind of your first hint. <sighs> they need gimmicks to sell modern McAllen. Well, they don't. But speaking of McAllen, I need to. Put, I'm, I think I'm gonna. I'm gonna send another email and put another bid on that McAllen 1057. You should. Giovanetti. McAllen, if you want to try the mm. best, best of the best of McAllen's, mm. obviously an old school 18 year old, is, is that's the Cadillac, right? Like that's yes. like, that's like the one we all know about, right? And then if you want to, mm. if you want to go from like a step above the Cadillac, then you go to like an old school McAllen 25 year old. But that's, we all know about that. We all know old school McAllen 18s and 25s were amazing. But if you want to go into the, into the other stratosphere of, of, of McAllen, of, of the best of the best, you want to try um, uh, 50s, like a 54 or 55 Rinaldi import. Yes, sir. You want to try a Grand Reserva, like a 1979, 18-year-old McAllen Grand Reserva Incredible. would blow your mind. Different world. And what you also want to try is a is an old-school 10-year-old 57% Italian import. Yes, foolproof Giovanetti import, Italian import. If you, I think, and there's, I can mention 10 of them, and you could replace these with a bunch of different ones. Um, also, like a fine and rare, but I don't think that's fair because fine and rares cost a fortune. Fine and rares are like we talked about earlier, hedge fund investment targets. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, we've yeah. reviewed three fine and rares on our channel. We've reviewed three fine and rares on our channel. Two or three. Two like minis and a full bottle. Ah, yes, three. A seventy, seventy-two, and seventy-nine. Yes. Yeah, we reviewed three fucking fine and rares and. Can't get a freaking ten views on it. <laughs> That's how it goes, man. Yeah, it's all good. Um, yes, three, yeah. Um. So yeah, and we have reviewed uh, a fifty-four. We have we reviewed the ten-year-old, right? The ten-year-old we're talking about, we yes. reviewed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we got we got the sample from Whiskey Exchange. That's right. Yeah, that's if you want to get into that old school. Like, danky, musty, old school sherry, what McAllen could do back in the day without having to buy a vintage, like a 54, 55 Rinaldi, that's the best way to go. They're so different, though. The 54 Rinaldi is so different from uh, from that other style. That It's it's just a completely different animal. Well, it's, but, it's peated, for starters. Yeah. You're yeah. getting an old school peated McAllen, which is crazy considering how today's McAllen is, but yeah, exactly. 
but I guess like a, a good stepping stone without having to pay for like a 50s, 60s vintage McGowan, you know? Yeah, because I'd say the te the old, the very best of the old 10-year-old is better than a very good 25-year-old. Yes, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Just crazy. It's crazy. It literally, it's, McAllen is, is different eras. Yeah. Every, every decade almost is a different era. Yeah. We are, I hope we actually do it. We've said we're going to do it so many times. What's that? We want to celebrate Mike's birthday with our first live. Oh, yes. We will. We will. Will we? Because we we've will. said we're going to do lives for like three years now. We haven't. We will. A thousand percent. Okay. The planet, he heard it. He said a thousand percent. We're going to do a live. We are so bad at like spending any of our whiskey time into like looking into like what's the best way to run alive what's the like way you know what's the best way to do all that stuff right we've like done zero research on any of that stuff and i'm sure it's as simple as clicking a button but right we don't spend any time on that we spend all our time on on whiskey 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 like legendary whiskey research about whiskey how are we going to acquire the next bottle what bottle are we going to acquire next and then we just turn the camera on and we talk about the bottles that we review, right? Yep. But we don't, we don't, we don't spend time on YouTube research. We, we, you know, we don't. We've been on YouTube for many years, but we don't know shit about it. Yeah, whereas no. guys will start tomorrow and will be hundred million times better than us at yeah. it within a day. Exactly. Uh, it's, it's obviously it's like if you're gonna do YouTube, why aren't you? better at youtube why don't you understand youtube you, you decided to do youtube you know motherfucker right. like learn it yeah you know you would think you would but for some reason we're stubborn assholes and we don't care to exactly you know it's not a priority for us unfortunately but we want to do you we want to do a live we want to do an uncorking of the special bottle uh i won't say which bottle but that's the goal uh we're shooting for february 20th but we'll see what yes. happens Exactly. We'll see what happens, but that's the goal. Our first live. We'll make it fun. Hopefully, you, uh, we'll let you guys know about it. Uh, and hopefully, we'll, we'll make it fun. Maybe do a couple giveaways and. Mm -hmm. uh, Absolutely. You know, be a little bit more like the other channels. We've got 50,000 subscribers versus us with our 2,000 subscribers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I think it's something that like we want like you know we don't do youtube to make money obviously we don't make any money from youtube but we uh we obviously want our channel to grow you know we're, we're we're putting our stuff out there and part of it is we just you know it's nice for us to have video records of stuff that we're trying mm -hmm. we get to look back at some of the stuff too and uh it's also part of the reason why we do the sampled reviews as well is uh you know we want we, we enjoy having records of what, what what we're trying and doing and stuff like that but we also want our channel to grow and uh we really appreciate the super super positive feedback we get from you guys you guys say the kindest things in the comments and and, and, and so many of you really appreciate it but you know we do want to see our channel grow too uh it definitely motivates us to do better when it does and like that that's a cool part is just having the historical record whether you have a full bottle and you go back into it and you kind of watch a video and kind of see what your notes were years ago and how they've changed today, or like let's say you get a miniature or a sample that you're thinking, oh my God, I'm only gonna try this one time. You get on video, same thing. You might get a miniature sample or your buddy gets the bottle later and kind of compare it to what you thought in the past. Yeah. And that's kind of a cool part of it. Yeah, and, and, and I know some people are very much against doing like, how could you review a sample? How are you truly getting to know a whiskey and you're doing a review of a sample? Right. The thing is... I, ideally, obviously, but yeah. I ideally, you want a full bottle, but here's the thing. Okay. Here's the thing. You are trying the whiskey in that moment. Mm -hmm. You're an experienced whiskey drinker. Okay, most people that are, you know, doing reviews, they have, they have some kind Video of... Video got cut off. We went about another 15, 20 minutes of uh rambling we talked about we were i guess i just looked at it and it got cut off when we were talking about samples can't even remember what else we said but 
then we got into uh, how we wanted to do, uh, just trying to remember what we talked about. We Our first live. Turn to a live stream. We didn't talk about the live stream before that, right? It was after for sure? I think so. If it's not, then it's deja vu. Or we want to do our first live stream uh, for Mike's birthday. And uh, February 20th is the goal. It's the goal. Uh, we talked about how we spent so much time about researching whiskey, learning about, <clears throat> excuse me, about all these epic whiskeys and researching on what we're going to buy next, but we just don't spend that much time right. or zero time about <clears throat> on YouTube. Actual YouTubing. Yeah. Even though we're on even, YouTube. Even though we're on YouTube, we don't spend any time on it, which is, you know. It's all like whiskey Probably research, why our, pricing, ch yeah, our channel isn't uh, that big in terms of subscribers and stuff because we, we, don't, we don't do the, the things that most YouTube channels do. But we definitely want to do a live. We want to make it special. We want to make it fun. We want to do a, an uncorking sick, of... Uh, some sick giveaways. Yeah, and uh, maybe do uh, uh, an epic uncorking of a very special old school bottle. My birthday bottle. That's right, baby. Uh, so February 20th is the goal. We'll see if it actually happens. Mm -hmm. Mike says it's going to happen for sure, but we'll see. I'll make it happen. Yeah. Uh, we'll wrap this video up with what we were kind of talking about. Mm -hmm. Um, top five distilleries of all time. Yes. We are not talking about current whiskeys. Yes. We're talking about history of whiskey, right? Uh, history of whiskey, top five of all time. Uh, we kind of went kind of deep into it, but I know our camera's running out of batteries. Just we'll kind of keep it short, unfortunately. Uh, we'll talk more about it maybe in another video, but uh, I said Springbank, Bullmore, Ardbeg, Lafroig, McAllen. Yes. You said you agree with the order, but you would flip Springbank and Bullmore. Yes. I agree to some extent, but my favorite distillery of all time is Springbank. I just have such a connection with it. Old school Springbank is something that there's just something about it. Something incredibly special about it, but but yeah, you can't you can't really you can't really go wrong. No, with that list. And and really, it's it's like one A one B, and it kills me to say that because like I was saying before, we are such Springbank fanboys. That Springbank old school profile is probably my favorite, but it's more the volume of epic, consistent bottles that Bomore put out in that old school era if I'm being trying to you know get rid of my spring bank fanboy love and just be totally critical analytical I have to put Bowmore just a tiny bit above spring bank now though those those are for sure our top five I can't you know yeah there's epic 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 distilleries but we're talking about volume of bottles of being epic right yeah we can think of some insanely legendary colilas insanely legendary klein leashes yeah. insanely legendary port ellens mm -hmm. broras lagavulins mm -hmm. uh but i can't think of necessarily 50 to 100 of them yeah especially uh vintages like yeah how many 63 64 65 66 55 56 just they just nailed it, man. Now, I have a question for you. Yes. This is hard. Hard question. Here we go. Pick one distillery where you can own every... Actually, yeah, you're going to pick one more. Pick <laughs> one distillery where you can own every bottle that's ever been bottled by them. Wasn't a hard question, Doug. And that, that kills me. But think about it. it. Think, no, no, no. Think no, about I this. Know. This is a hard question. Pick one distillery. I ranked McAllen number five, but think about this. Pick one distillery... Where you can own every bottle that's ever been released by them. Every McCain. You know how many fucking McCallans they were released? How many vintages? How many crazy 18s? How many crazy 10s? How many crazy 12? I mean, how many crazy 25s? How many Rinaldi's? All the fancy Lalique bottlings. All the 70 year olds, the 65 year olds, the 50 year olds. Uh, you know why though? You're still centering on a particular profile. Correct. I was going to say that after. And really, yeah, really, it's 
the best possible flavor profile they've ever done, and that's what you're ranking. Yes, sherry style. They do. They do it. The they've done it the best in that. I say I rank. I rank Spring Bank one, Bullmore two, Ardbeg three, Lafroig four, McAllen five. If I could pick every single bottle from one distillery, I'll go Bullmore. And you know, and part of that too is that McAllen, right? You have like the pre World you're saying, War II. But sorry, you're to interrupt. You're saying Bowmore? Yes. Part, you know, and just saying like the McAllen thing. Part of that is you know you had the pre World War II to during World War II McAllen bottlings that they were peated, like the Rinaldi's, and they were very different. But what we know today is McAllen, it's unpeated. So without peat, you're not getting that complexity level that like evolutionary, just confusing your palate, your brain, your nose, mind-blowing level, that's where Bo Moore and especially Springbank, the way they, they did their medium peat, and of course, Ardbeg Lafroig, that's where they have a step up to me on McAllen, where they were consistently mixing in that old school, sweet, candied, beautiful peat with the way they did it. So really think about it. I mean, you know, Springbank's not Isla, but three of the top five are Isla. Springbank has its own very, you know, coastal kind of medium peat style. But the fact McAllen's in that list just shows you McAllen's reputation as well, you know? Oh, McAllen, I mean, come on. And, and a, a lot of it too is like, you're talking about really old, crazy McAllen's, which obviously are nuts, but we're also not saying that crazy funk of that peak. We're also saying pick every bottle that was released ever by that distillery. Keep in mind with McAllen, you're getting way more bottles too. Sure, but the same profile. Yes, which you're not going to get that that crazy unique. You're funk, not getting the same amount of complexity. Complexity of so so Bowmore Springbank. All right, Bank, no, Lafroy. So so every bottle you can keep, you go Bowmore. Yes. What would you pick second? Springbank. Every and, spring bank. Yes. And again, it's 1A, 1B, but there's still one. Three has to be McAllen, even though we ranked it five. Oh, no, this is a better question. You should have asked it a different way. <laughs> so every bottle, so the question is Lefroy, Ardbeg, or McAllen. Every bottle, oh, that's, that's a better question. See, there, McAllen. That's a much better there, question. There, McAllen either becomes two or three for me. No, yeah, I see what you're saying. That's a better question. Because I'm ranking McAllen 5, but to get every single bottle from the distillery, done. every uh. McAllen? See, now, now... Now you're going probably, yeah, McAllen, Lefroy, Ardbeg. So for me, so for me, the list... If I'm keeping every bottle from the distillery, yeah. I'm going Bowmore, McAllen, Springbank, Ardbeg Lafroy. Don't worry, I won't tell Springbank that you cheated on them. I rank Springbank number one. You rank them number two. True. But number three, if I get to keep every bottle, ever bottle. I can't. I, see what you're I can't. It, 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 I see what it you're becomes saying. very hard <laughs> for me to. to I if I could keep every bottle, to not. Yeah, McCown has to has to be in there. There's just so much. I feel you in like there's the, <clears throat> so much. And like the old school, like McCown 1938, Karate France. Yeah. The 26, the legend goes for $1.6 million. Rares. I feel you. I feel you. It's like I get to own all of them. That was tough. Yeah. No, I, I, <laughs> well, I, I have honestly, to. I, have I would to. still I would still do Beaumont, Springbank, McCallan. But definitely, yeah, McCallan is three for sure. Yeah. Above the Freud and Art Day. Yeah, but it's a fun discussion. Now, I think about this when I like shower and drive and stuff like that. Of course. Top five distilleries today. I don't know how to do it. Today? I don't know how to do it at all. Fuck. <laughs> like, I, I, I know Springbank is in there. Yeah. And then I don't know. Like, I, I, I can, I can, I know, but I don't know. Yeah. Because I, I'll, I'll start naming the five and then I'm like, no, but what about this? Just kind of like, well, two years ago, yes, but now, so it's just very hard. It, it changes more, yeah. So it's just very, very hard to do top it's five now. It's tough uh, to Springbank would be in there now, which yes. is very, very props to Springbank because it would be in That's there before. Said. That's what we said. It would be in there before, and it's in there now. 
Yeah, well, that's and that's what we that's what we usually say. It's our favorite distillery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And overall, it is. Yeah. Yeah. So good questions, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sorry the video got cut off. I don't even know why. The video got cut off without the battery running out. That's, that's the weirdest part. We did talk for like a good 15 minutes. We kind of got into it. So It shows you how good we are at YouTube. Yeah, exactly. It shows you how good we are <laughs> no at YouTube. No battery. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I don't know how this is all going to be, but it's a cigar hangout. We're just dramming, just talking, chilling. chilling. chilling yeah. So it is what it is. I apologize for that. But we're going to cut it off right here before it get, gets cut off again. But... Um, yeah, we definitely missed out on 15 minutes of some some fun some fun yes. conversations. Yeah, intrigue. Yeah. yeah. But anyways, um, I know you guys have been asking for more of these, so we're doing them. And uh, I'm happy to see that you guys enjoy these, just kind of us hanging out Love and it. ranting away. Love it, guys. Uh, and like we said, we'll, we'll try to turn these into a little bit more of lives. Um, yeah. So hopefully that's a, a little and bit more fun. Get, little you, interaction. get you guys involved in the conversation. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, you guys. Cheers.